Good evening, everyone. I'll try to be brief. I think Father had a copy of my notes. He's uh, talked on some of the things that I wanted to mention to you tonight. Um, but I am humbled to be here to talk to you about, about stewardship, and, and especially at this Mass, because I know that we have some, some serious disciples uh, here in our presence. Um, so to talk about stewardship, for me, I think it starts with this question, what's the meaning of your life? You know, and, and it kind of takes me back for some of you who studied under the Baltimore Catechism, you might remember this question and answer. Why did God make us? God made us to show forth his goodness and to share with us his everlasting happiness in heaven. Second question, what must we do to gain the happiness of heaven? And the answer, to gain the happiness of heaven, we must know, love, and serve God in this world. I have found through my experience, that is the meaning of my life, is to serve God. I have to get to know him, love him, and to serve him in this world. And so, you know, how do we, if you remember from last week's gospel, there, you had the 10 maidens, five of them were wise, five of them were foolish. Remember the problem with the, the foolish maidens? They didn't have enough oil. <laughs> What's the oil? And, and St. Augustine tells us that the oil is really our good works. You know, and I was thinking to myself as I meditated on that last week is, why couldn't the wise maidens just share some of their oil with, with the, the, the foolish maidens? And of course, the parable tells us there wouldn't have been enough for everybody, right? But on a spiritual level, I can't share my good works. I can't share that with my wife. It's not like there's a heavenly credit that I can give to her. It's, it's a thing that's personal that we have to do ourselves. It's, it's a personal faith response that we have to make. And, and that's why on a deeper level, we really can't, can't share that. But I was struck by when the foolish maidens got to the door of the banquet and they knocked on the door and the Lord's response, truly I say to you, I do not know you. And so I think the question that, that we have to have, first of all, when we talk about stewardship is, how do we know the Lord? How do we know what he's asking us to do? And so I would tell you that, that number one, we've got to make time for that. And that's got to be in our daily prayer, not just on Saturdays and Sundays, but every day. And then, you know, for, for, for a while there, you know, I would pray and I didn't hear anything. And maybe some of you are like that. And so I would say that in your prayer time, study, get your Bible out. This is how God speaks to us in the word. And so even without studying scripture, many of you should be able to answer this question that was asked of Jesus in Matthew 22. Teacher, which is the great commandment in all the law? And you probably know this by heart. First, you shall love the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. It's the great Shema from Deuteronomy 6. So how do, we get, how do we do that? How do we love the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul and all our mind? Prayer, study, going to mass like you're here today, faithfully participating in the sacraments, all of this we can do by ourselves. It requires no one else to do it. But then the second one, Jesus said, Christianity is not a solo sport. No, actually he didn't say that, I'm paraphrasing. But what, what he really said was, he said that this is the great and first commandment, love the Lord your God, but the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And as I thought about stewardship, it made me think that, that in these two great commandments, we have a vertical component in loving God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength. But there's also a horizontal component to this, that we have to love our neighbor as ourselves. And you know, all of these readings, Last week, this week, next week, they're all build, building into a great crescendo of Christ the King, King of the universe, which is next, next weekend. And next weekend, we're going to hear the gospel about the judgment of the nations, the sheep and the goats, as I like to call it. And the Lord, the people are, are asking the Lord after they've been sent off to a not so great place, Lord, when did we see you hungry? or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and we didn't minister to you. And the Lord's response was, truly I say to you, as you did not do it to the least of these, you didn't do it to me. And that's always, that's always struck with me. So by loving our neighbor, 
by loving others less fortunate than us, we love the Lord. And then today, in the parable of the talents, and Father's right, at the very first verse of this, of this reading, Jesus is talking, he's still talking about the kingdom of God, but he's, but he's talking about stewardship. He's talking about these servants that the master gave property to, and the servants were responsible for the property. And he speaks about these talents, and these talents, as Father said, were, were, were measurements of, of, of monetary value. A talent of silver was worth 15 to 20 years worth of wages. But there's a deeper level than this. Je you know, it's not that, that Jesus is saying we should go out and be investors. You know, the talents, as Father said, is representing the gifts that the Lord has given to us. The moral of the parable is use your gifts in a way that are consistent with God's investment strategy. Are you gifted as a public speaker? Lead a small faith group and share your faith with others. Be a lector. Are you gifted with children? Become a catechist. Are you gifted with a warm smile? Get involved with the hospitality ministry. They need your help. Are you called, are you gifted with a call to serve the poor? Get involved in our food pantry. Are you gifted with a beautiful voice? Get involved with the music ministry and help lead others, praise God. Giving of your time and talent does not cost you anything, but I promise it gains you everything. But what about the servant that gave only one talent? You know, he had a really weird response to the master. I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not winnow. I think he was trying to win some favor with him. Not. I think it represents what sin does to us is that it, it distorts our relationship with the master, with the Lord. And ultimately, the problem with the servant that was given one talent is that he didn't do a thing. He didn't do a thing. The gospel in the, in the New American Bible calls it he was lazy. In the Revised Standard Version, it actually uses the term sloth, which is one of the seven deadly sins. Sloth essentially is spiritual laziness. So the moral of the parable is that God has given us all unique talents and abilities Yet we all can have a tendency to fall into spiritual laziness, into the sin of sloth. And when we do not use these gifts for what they're really for, which is to build up the kingdom, build up the kingdom of God. All right, so I've talked about time and talent, but there's also treasure. And does the parish need your support? Absolutely. It's been a tough year, but without your generosity, we could not have done what we did when the celebration of mass was suspended in the spring. If you look back here and all these guys that are working the computer screens and the live streams and a camera here and a camera there, we didn't have to go and ask you for money for that. You were generous and we were able to do that and, and, and in so doing, we filled an important need at this parish at that time. We were also able to continue our capital campaign and it's a beautiful building over there and I'm, I'm looking forward to the time when we can share that with you. But to me, that's not even the most important reason to give. From my standpoint, I give because I need it. Not because the church needs it. Not because God needs it. God doesn't need anything. I give because I need it. It helps me to serve others. And I know that in serving others, as we will hear next week's gospel, I'm serving the Lord himself. You know, another of the seven deadly sins is greed or avarice. And I would suggest to you that generosity is the antidote to that deadly sin. Sin tends to turn ourselves on ourselves like this. We turn in on ourselves like pride, the number one deadly sin. Generosity forces to open up our arms to others, just like in loving neighbor. So I would say this to you, to all of those who give, and I know it's all, many of you in here are faithful, faithful givers. We could not do it without you. We couldn't have done it without you. And that includes all those who fill out a pledge card and those who don't, thanks to all of you. If you give without submitting a pledge card, I would encourage you to take that step. It's a tangible way of saying in writing, I'm committed to serving others through this pledge card. If you're not a, and by the way, if you're not a member of our parish and you happen to be a member somewhere else, then your, your pastor will thank me for giving this talk. Support your parish if you're a visitor. 
Um, if you're not a regular supporter, or if you're, if you're one who maybe thinks that your contribution is not significant, then I have two things for you to consider. One is what Father already mentioned, the poor widow in Luke 21. The Lord praised her because she was only able to contribute two copper coins, but she was worthy of praise because she gave out of her poverty. And then secondly, I can tell you from personal experience, it feels great to give whatever the amount. You will experience in a tangible way the blessing that flows from your sacrifice. Almsgiving is part of being a disciple of Christ. It's love of neighbor. And by sharing our treasure, our time, and our talent, we can come, like the Baltimore Catechism says, to know, love, and serve God in this world. Ultimately, I guess in my, my, my concluding remark would be, I, I say this because in heaven, I really would like for there to be a St. Francis of Assisi Madison wing of heaven. And I'd like to see all of you there. I'd like to be there. But we can do this. You know, I, I would like to be there with you so maybe we could exchange a heavenly high five where we can celebrate with the Lord forever. But in order to do this, we have to do this as a community. It's not a solo sport. We do this together. And each one of us, as St. Paul says, we're part of the mystical body of Christ. So we must do our part to advance the kingdom and we have to work together. So I would encourage you, when you get your pledge cards, fill them out, love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. God bless.